let's just do it this way. Uh, I'm going to call this promises made and promises kept. Okay? So I'm a third direct generation uh, family member at Buffalo Trace Distillery. Uh, many of you have been on my tours. Um, but the first time I came to Buffalo Trace Distillery, I want you to try to imagine growing up and being with your grandparents and visiting their farms or places like that. I'm five years old, I'm with my grandfather and my dad, and we're fishing behind the distillery at Buffalo Trace Distillery. And I'm down there, and if you know anything about old distilleries, they were always along rivers and creeks because you could dump the mash out into the river and the fish would feed on it. And everybody knew to fish behind distilleries. So I'm down there with my dad and my granddad, and I'm looking up at this building, and all I can see are these great big cylinders and all this steam coming out. And I'm like, you know, what the hell with this fishing business? So I go up the side of the bank, and I'm looking through the fence, and my dad and my granddad knew just about everybody at the distillery, and one of the workers said, uh, they said, come on up. You want to look inside? And I went in there and tried to imagine walking into this dry house and just imagine some of the largest tumble dryers that you can see, that you can think of. And these, there's like four or five of them, and they're just rolling, all the steam's coming out, and mash is going in, but dried animal feed is coming out the other side. And I'm thinking, this is cool. So I started hanging around there with my dad and my granddad, and eventually I got a chance to go into a warehouse. And I'm thinking, okay, they've been talking about leaky barrels. You know, Trey was talking about his barrels and getting leaking and messing up. I'm thinking, I'm five years old. Now, a leaky barrel to me is like knocking over a bottle of bourbon, you know, and you see it gurgling out. Eh, that's not a leaky barrel. A leaky barrel is a mess. It's dirty, gooey stuff coming out through the pieces of wood. And I'm like, and they're getting excited about this. this eh, it's not working. So I started hanging out with my dad and my granddad at that distillery, and I learned something about myself and about my family and about my heritage. Because what I never understood growing up was why my grandfather looked like he did. And I think about what's going on in society today, and I tell people every day, history can be baggage or it can be an enhancer. It depends on how you want to look at it. So the only reason why I'm standing here with you today is because um, my family got here because um, Colonel Blanton and Colonel West. Colonel West was a plantation owner out of Virginia. And he also owned a plantation down from the distillery. And he had fathered two kids by his cook. And when slavery was abolished, he was going back to Virginia, to um, traditional Virginia. This territory out here was known as Fincastle County, Virginia. And during that period of time, the agreement was if he would provide land for the kids, she would go back to Virginia and spend the rest of her life with him, even though slavery was over. So my grandfather didn't look African American. He looked like a, you know, you've seen these guys in the vineyards with the real pretty leathery skin and the pretty silver hair. I'm thinking, damn, my granddad's cool, right? <laughs> but because of that, it allowed him to be the first African American warehouse manager of a major distillery in the United States. And what happened behind that was the Scottish and Irish had shared with him how to age whiskey barrels. And that started the heritage with my family. And he and Colonel Blanton would pull these barrels out and they would throw bourbon. They were called burgoo parties, but they were bourbon parties. And that's how the distillery won political favors. So they were around there together. Dad and granddad were around there. Dad was there for 47 years with Elmer T. Lee. Granddad was there for 52 years with Colonel Blanton. Okay? My father, uh, coming along, saw this heritage, and he wanted me to promise him that if I ever got a chance, that I would work at the distillery so that he could say we had three direct generations to work at Buffalo Trace Distillery. And uh, life is a journey. And what happened was the bourbon industry from the 60s to the 90s, anybody that knows about whiskey, did. So rums and vodkas and cocktails were the thing. Bourbon was dead. So I got recruited by another company, and I went to work for AT&T. I was a network systems operations and engineer. 
Uh, I worked with Bell Labs. I did uh, digital switches, microwaves, fiber optics, things like that. But I had this crazy knack of taking technical and specs, uh, specifications and saying them in ways that it told a story and it made sense to the marketing folks and to the consumers that were going to have to pay for these projects. And because of that, uh, I got national recognition. Uh, we did some networks that you use today uh, in, uh, in your travels. It's called a star network and I designed that with uh, Bell Labs. And in the middle of all that, I get a call from my dad and he asked me would I keep my promise. And I'm like, uh, like, well, sure, Dad, what's up? And he says, well, I got some good news and some bad news. I said, well, what's the good news? And he says, well, the good news is I love you. And I'm thinking, oh, hell, this is bad. <laughs> so I said, Dad, what's going on? And he says, well, he said, I found out I'm, he said, I found out I'm terminally ill, and I'm asking you if you'll keep your promise and come home and be my caregiver. Sounds practical. I'm thinking, okay. And he says, uh, and by the way, he says, I want to pass away in my own bed, and I want to keep going to the church I've gone to all my life, which means he was asking me in a nice way, just come back home. And I did so, and when I came back, he said, I did not know that he had been scheming with Mark Brown, who's the president and CEO of uh, Buffalo Trace. And uh, he had told Mark about this legacy that the family had, and he wanted me to be a part of that legacy. So he said, I don't care what you give him to do, just give him something so that we can say he works at the distillery. <laughs> Tour guide, Buffalo Trace Distillery, here I am. <laughs> now, to show you how these things work out, on days that he felt strong enough, he would get in his old car and he would drive down through there and I would be in the middle of a tour and he would pull up next to the tour, roll down his window and he'd look out and he said, well, hello everybody. They had no earthly idea who this man was. And they said, well, hello. He says, um, are y'all having a good time on the tour? They said, yeah. He said, well, that's my boy giving him. He don't give the damn things right. And he'd drive on off. And they would look like, who was this old man? So what I learned from that and what I've gleaned from all of this are a couple of things. At the same time this was going on with my dad and my grandfather, my mother also worked for a competing distillery right there in Frankfurt. She worked for National. So she worked for Old Crow and Old Granddad and Old Taylor out in Millville. She did not drink. She was a teetotaler. But she had a nose that would get you in trouble if you got near a cigarette and came in the house. Okay? <laughs> she could nose the whiskeys and hold them up to the light and swirl them around just like what Trey was talking about. And you can tell a lot about your product just by the way it smells and by the way it looks. And so I had it on both sides. You bring all that together and you have a product like me that's crazy about the scientific stuff, but I love the practical applications of life and stories and bourbon. And I'm here to share this with you because along the way things will happen. And it's the way you deal with those things that make you who you are and why you treat others the way that you do. So uh, my story to you is simply this. I made a promise, and I kept it, and it's probably one of the nicest things I've ever done in my life. That's my story.